Well, uh, it's really an honor for me uh, to get to even speak today, uh, also a privilege, uh, on a day called the Mother's Day. So uh, we know that today is special because we're honoring mom and we're appreciating them. So if you think about it, though, uh, mother's love is the, probably the closest example that we have close to God's love. Why did I say that? Because you think about the church, childbirth, right? It's the, the, the one thing that women drew, they went through the value of the shadow of death to bring lives into being. And when you think about it, mother's love is also the one thing that drives them to always, over and over again, to make sacrifices for their children. Even sometimes, you drive them to the point of even say, if I have to give my life. So mothers, our love is something very, very important. And uh, personally, though, other than God's love, there is nothing compared to uh, mother's love. Because growing up, uh, I had this particular song that I enjoy listening to. Uh, it was composed by Prince Nico Imbager, titled Sweet Mother. The lyrics in this song, if you hear it, it did a great job explaining mother's love and the sacrifices that mothers made for their child. Uh, and I have to tell you that I cherish my mom so, so much that I love to listen to it. I can listen to it a thousand times a day. It just reminds me of my mom. So, and that's the very reason I'm trying to share that with you. But I have to tell you, though, if you're interested in looking up, uh, he was composed in broken English. Broken English is what we speak back home, uh, Ghana, Nigeria, most African countries, just to get the message across. It's not like proper English, but when you speak it, you understand. So when you're trying to look it up, let me know if you need any help. Uh, I can help you with that. My wife, Janet, who also is also here. I have Brother Lanre there. I have Sister Kelechiku Koyi there. They can help you with understanding that uh, lyrics. So uh, it's a powerful song. You, you enjoy. So on this note, let me say happy Mother's Day to all mothers and uh, as, for, as, as a matter of fact, to all women in general. And as your church family, we're celebrating you today. So after the service, please do me a favor. Uh, you want to visit our wonderful hospitality team. We have a special treat for everyone. You don't have to be a mother to get that because we're celebrating mothers, right? So we get to celebrate as a family together. Please make sure you do that. So, and I know that putting together a Mother's Day's message is always a tough one. Uh, because uh, I don't suppose there's ever been any human being or a person that actually said something that is eloquent enough or expressive enough to tell us about the true value of a mother. But thank God, the good news is God who created us all has given us a template to do that. And that's what we're about to look at today. So I noticed that I said Happy Mother's Day to all women in general because whether you have your own natural, foster, adopted, or even spiritual children that God has divinely put in your life, God sees you as a mother. And he cherishes you so much so that he inspired the writing of a chapter in the Bible just for you. So however... Before we get on with honoring and appreciating all women, I want us to have some fun with that. So let's lighten it up, right? So while I was doing, doing my preparation for today's message, I came across an article uh, that listed some fun facts about Mother's Day. So let's have some fun with it. Fun fact number one. Did you know that this very day today, 22 million phones will ring on a Mother's Day? Why is that? Because mom is so special. And if you think about it, even within the United States alone, with families spread across nations, 50 states, then we have the federal district, we have five major territories, we also have the various minor islands. Phone calling has been the centerpiece in every single mother day in which people say they talk to their mom. And I know this is true because the last time I was blessed to speak with my mom before she went to see Jesus was 2012 Mother's Day on a phone call. So I'm thinking if there was no phone call, I wouldn't have anything to remember. 
But what a joyful moment it was because of that Mother's Day phone call. So every time I remember that wonderful and memorial phone conversation, it gladdens my heart. So it is estimated that today, 22 million phones will ring for Mother's Day. Maybe some of you have even already, you've already made the call. Maybe some of you have done that. So, and I, when you think about it, of course, I don't want us to forget the use of social media these days, right? So we have social media, text messages, uh, voice messaging, Zoom, video calling. Uh, talk of it. So all of those social media that helps us to connect with mom. I mean, I think I can picture this now. Alexa, call mom. Or Siri, call mom. Hey, Siri, FaceTime mom. Or for the Android family, hey, Google, call mom. So you got all of those various ways in which uh, we get a call out on. Fun facts number two. Greeting cards top the list of Mother's Day gift. Every year, people trying to find the best way to say, I love you, mom. And most people do that with what? Greeting cards. And that is why greeting cards comes on top of the list of all gifts for mom. And uh, it's very helpful to be able to have resources like that. Of course, follow closely by flowers, special outings, gift cards, clothing, jewelry, talk of it, electronic devices, and so on and so forth. Number three, for those people that love flowers, the carnation is the official flower of Mother's Day. So for gardeners here, if you have carnation, you have the treasure in your garden. And this tradition began when Anna Jarvis sent hundreds of carnation flowers to a home church in West Virginia to celebrate mothers in that congregation in 1908. And that single act alone landed the carnation on top uh, of the official uh, flower of Mother's Day. And it was in 1908. And get this, fun fact number four. Because of that single act that Anna Jarvis did, on May, 19, May 9, 1914, President Woodrow Wilson signed a proclamation that on May 1914 will be the Mother's Day, official day in America. Second Sunday in May. And that's why we're celebrating moms and dad today. He asked Americans on that day that all Americans should give a public thank you to their mothers and all mothers across the board. Fun fact number one. Mother's Day is the busiest restaurant day of the year because we enjoy celebrating mom while eating together as a family. And since we don't want mom cooking that day, we don't want her at the kitchen, what do we do? We make reservations at what? At the restaurants. And that make Mother's Day uh, the busiest restaurant day of the year. Because of all those spendings, gift card flowers and all of that, fun fact number six is this, to boost our economy. This year, total spending on Mother's Day is estimated to be a whopping $35.7 billion, which is greater than last year. Last year, it was $31 billion. This is how special moms are. This is how special women are. So we use that to boost our economy because of all of those spending, because we appreciate mom. Even in our culture, God appreciates more than more than that. And that's what we're going to look at once we're done with this form. Number seven. Mother's Day is celebrated in more than 100 countries around the world. I was doing the research. I said, I want to see which places. Then I began to see. Then I found this map. And he gave different dates in which mothers are celebrated around the world. And that shows that even though we're doing it May 14 here, it might be a different day, but it's the same. It doesn't matter where you are. The principle is, are we honoring mothers and women in our lives? And last but not the least, from fact number eight, Mother's Day is the third most attended church service. Why is that? Because most people want to start their celebration by going to church with their mom, especially when they are close to them. Some people even travel to be with their mom so they can go together. Of course, behind Easter's and Christmas service, which is our Super Bowl Sunday, you know, Easter and Christmas, those are big ones. So uh, Mother's Day begin, becomes the third one. That's amazing, amazing to know that mothers are very valuable in our life. And this is what I want to do. Since greeting cards top the list of Mother's Day gift, so I want us to look at what God's greeting card said about mom. So the title for today's message 
is Mother's Day card from God. Women's Day card from God. And this is God's acknowledgement of moms, wives, and women in general. Because he describes a, val- a godly woman. He describes a valuable wife. He describes a dynamic woman. He describes a virtuous woman. And when God created women, in fact, all of us, he said so many things about us. Just like this one song said, Reckless Love. Before I was even in here, he was speaking life over me. So everything that God was saying about women, we get to see his heart in the Bible, especially in Proverbs chapter 31. But before we unpack the content of Mother's Day card, I want to start with this backdrop to understand. Because as you're hearing those uh, Mother's Day card content, you might be thinking, I'm not up to this. I'm, no, 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 it's not about that. So I want us to understand that this I standard described is just an inspiring goal for all women everywhere that God is saying, I already made you to be this way. I just need you to walk in my will so I can get you there if you're not there yet. If you're already there, God is encouraging you. Great job. Keep doing what you're doing. Also, there will be some cultural details of a woman's specific tax that you're going to see. But that doesn't matter because in this day and age, everything is changing as you're hearing those readings. But what matters is the principles are timeless. We can transfer the principle of God. Godly principles transcends any culture any tradition. In fact, any philosophy that human beings can come up with. And that is our heart. And I want to encourage you to know that God is not condemning you or judging you in any shape or form as you hear this word of God. But all he's doing is encouraging you to pursue the destiny that he already has for you because he created us and he spoke his life into us. And that is what he's doing. With that being said, open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 31. Proverbs chapter 31, and we're going to start from verses 10 through 12. Verses 10 through 12. Who can find a virtuous wife? It begins. For a wart is far above rubies, and rubies are precious stones, gemstones, very valuable, expensive. Verse 11 said, the heart of our mother safely trusts her. The heart, sorry, the heart of our husband safely trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and no evil all the days of our life. So the very first point we see here in these verses is that she's a woman of character. And just as wisdom is important than wealth, character is more than important than anything else that we can talk about. Because a godly woman is one who knows how to seek for godly wisdom. And then apply those godly wisdom to all of our dealings so that everyone under our influence will benefit from that particular wisdom that she has. Next, we're going to read verses 13 through 19. Then we're going to jump to 21. You will see the reason why I'm jumping because I'm trying to coordinate the points for us here. So verse 13 says, she seeks wool and flax and willingly walks with her hands. She is like the merchant sheep. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion, of her, and a portion for her maidservant. She considers a field and buys it. And from her profits, she plants a vineyard. She guards herself with strength and strengthens her home. Verse 18 said, she perceived that her merchandise is good. And a lamb does not go out by night. Verse 19, she stretches out her hands to the distaff, which is like the maid around the house and other employees. And her hands hold the spindle. Now let's jump to verses 21 and 22. Verse 21 says, she is not afraid of snow for a household. For all a household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. A clothing is fine linen and purple. Now let's jump to verse 24. Verse 24 says, She makes linen garments and sell them and supply sashes uh, for the merchants. I know that's a law, right? This is what I was talking about, the culture, specific tax of a woman. But we're going to bring it to our day and age. So here we see that the second point is that she's a very diligent and prudent person. 
She works willingly and delights in proper care for her household, whether it's going to the grocery store for food or sometimes maybe wiping the noses of the kids when they have runny nose or maybe kissing their scraped knees or kissing the boo-boo. Mommy, I've heard that for, you know, and things like that. And they do all that, driving kids to school, even enduring all those football, soccer, baseball. They might even be wherever they're playing in the rain or cold. You see mom going out there doing all of those. And they also say that she's venture into income generating transactions for her family so she can bring some money home. And the Bible recorded she's up early and busy with her chores. You get the impression that the night before she make a list of things to do, constantly thinking about the welfare of the family because she's very careful to fill up her time. She prepares the very best for her family by bringing all provisions. Remember when I was talking about snow, scarlet, clothing. She prepared the best for them, bringing all provisions that they need, all things necessary and convenient for the family. And whenever she's doing anything, she applies herself to the business that is proper for her and her family, considering that whatever she engages in has to be advantageous to the household. In all of this, even the ones I didn't mention, she derived the true satisfaction in knowing that her household is well taken care of. Now let's go back to verse 20. This is the reason why I scattered them. We go back to verse 20. Verse 20 says, She extends her hand to the poor, yet she reaches her hands to the needy. This shows that she's a generous person. While she ministers to the needs of her family, she also keeps her eyes and ears open to the needs of people around her. The people in the neighbor, it might be the neighbor, it might be the friends or family, because she wants to do what she can to help them. Because she's very intentional about giving to others, all for glory. I mean, she often serves the poor with her own hands. And she does it freely and cheerfully without complaining. She seeks opportunity to do good and communicate how to do the same to people around her because that's her virtue. Now we're moving on to verse 23. Verse 23 says, Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. This means she compliments her husband. She did her work and made sure that it's easier for him to do his work. The point is, husband and wife should complement each other as they each seek to fulfill their godly role in the life that God has given them. And why is this is the husband who encourages a wife to use and lead with the strength that the Lord has blessed her with? Because when you think about it, both leadership and submission in a home it's just an evidence and love and obedience. And the one doesn't nullify the other. Now we jump to verse 25. Verse 25 says, Strength and honor are clothing. And guess this, she shall rejoice in time to come. What does this mean? It means that she's confident as she faces the future, as she faces the unknown. Why is that? Because strength and honor are clothing in which she wraps herself. And in the Bible, to be clothed with something means that it's part of us. And it reveals itself in our character, in our conducts, in the actions that we take. And with a trust in the truth of God's word and the goodness of God's heart, she bears all situations and challenges honorably to the glory of God. And that makes her, if there's anything that is a trouble or a problem, she can laugh at those things because she knows that the strength and the character that she has is rooted in God. And because God controls all things, she's going gonna, gonna to see her truth. She's a woman of faith who knows that God is with her and her family, no matter what the outcome is. Because God knows where the end is going to be. He knows the end from the beginning. Now I'm going to read verse 26. Verse 26 says that she opens her mouth with wisdom 
and or a tongue is the law of kindness. Kindness. Here we see that she's a capable woman, a teacher of wisdom. Because she governs herself by the wisdom of God. And then she teaches her children and people around her the wisdom of God. She also shares her insight with her husband. And because she loves God and God's love is in her heart and kindness is written in that heart, she is kind every time she's giving advice and counsel to people, even to children around her. So when a godly woman speaks, she speaks wisdom and loving instructions is on her tongue, the Bible says. She has the ability to use the right word at the right time in any real time in our situations. And I think that no one doubts for a moment the influence of a mother in a child's life. So then I say, okay, let me see what people are saying about their mothers. So I found a quote by the first president of the United States, George Washington. And here's what it says about his mother. And I quote, my mother was the most beautiful woman I ever saw. All I am, I owe to my mother. I attribute my success in life to the moral, intellectual, and physical education I received from her. Those are the wisdom that mothers, women teach us. So we appreciate that. Moving on to verse 27. She watches over the ways of our household, <coughs> excuse me, and does not eat bread of idleness. This means that she's an attentive overseer of the household. The impression here is that nothing in the household escapes her notice, whether it's food, grocery shopping, finances, clothing, or school lesson, you name it. She knows everything about it. She enjoys her faithful ministry in the home, so she does her work faithfully day and night. Think of it this way. If the husband has a role to lead as the head of the house, the wife is the chief operating officer, making sure everything runs smoothly from top to bottom. Now we're reading verses 28 and 29. 28 says, Our children rise up and call her blessed. Our husband also, our husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. This shows that she's a woman worthy of praise. Because she's a great blessing to everyone around her. So everyone is praising her. The children get up and say, thank you, mom. And they're praying, we thank you, God, for giving us our mom because of how blessed we are to have her. And her husband actually think of himself as a blessed man. That's so much so that every opportunity he gets, he speaks well of our wife as one of the best women. This shows just that, you know, when you think about moms and mothers and women in our life, they should be appreciated regularly and not just on a special day like this. It should be an everyday thing to appreciate moms, women in our lives uh, so that we can continue to honor them. In fact, as a matter of fact, when you think about it, back in Israel, they never had Mother's Day, but God reminded them what they need to do. The fifth, commanders, fifth commandment said, honor your what? Your father and your mother. So when you think about the fifth commandment, in fact, every day should be Mother's Day and Father's Day so that we can honor them every day. And it's so sad when you see members of the family taking each other for granted and not appreciating one another with sincere heart. And the father should hold to set the example for the children uh, to make sure that they always thank their wife for what they do on a daily basis. And Father, we encourage as men to see our wife as the women that surpasses them all. They're the best of all. Verse 30 says, Charm is deceitful, and beauty is passing. But the woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. In other words, this is everything that helped her to be who she is. The secret of her life is that she fears the Lord. And of course, I'm not negating charm and beauty, qualities in a woman. I'm not saying that that's a sin. Actually, it's a wonderful thing. But what the Bible is telling us is that those things will fade. But the woman who walks with the Lord and seeks to please him has a beauty that never fades. 
And the fear of the Lord here means to respect and honor who God is. And when you think about it, we need to understand that the fear of the Lord is not a negative thing. In fact, actually, the fear of the Lord helps us to produce wise and healthy decisions or action that honors God. With this mindset, she walks with the Lord and seeks to please him above everything else because she truly loves the Lord. So what does she do? She daily reads the word of God, pray, and seek to obey God's will. So everything she does is guided by the principles of God's word. And this is what completes and crowns her a character as a godly woman and makes her a treasure that is indeed beyond the price of rubies, as we have seen in verse 10. And also she goes beyond what is physical, right? The Bible says that she not only cares physically for her home, but she's also a watchman, just like the series we had a while ago with Pastor John. She a watchman over the emotional and spiritual condition of her family, thinking beyond what is earthly, also thinking about eternity to come. They have to know the Lord. Everything we do has to have an eternity value to it. And finally, we read verse 31. Verse 31 says, Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. This means that our very life is a testimony to others. Our life should be testimony to other people around us because our husband and children acknowledge her value and praise her. And so do other people in the community. That's what the gates mean. Everyone who hears about her recognizes her our good works, and honor her. And when we think about it, when it's all said and done, above all, she even have greater honor when she stands before the Lord because she honor him. Now, as I close, and if you're here today or watching online and sensing that the content of this Mother's Day card from God is just too high of a standard, I'm going to repeat what I said in the beginning. I want you to know that God is not condemning you. He's not judging you. But all he's doing is that he wants you to remember that I spoke a word of life over you. I spoke a word that because I'm your designer, I'm your creator, this is who I designed you to be. And I want you to walk in that area. We sing this song, The Reckless Love. He encourages us. And as a matter of fact, he's just reminding of what our destiny was. That's what he was is telling us. Your destiny in God is what God is reminding you of. And he wants you to go after it, just like he went after us all the time. So he's not saying about where you are right now, but God is already speaking to where he wants you to be as you continue to seek him faithfully. So therefore, I want you to see this content of Mother's Day card as an inspiration to be all that God made you to be since he created you in your mother's womb. Godly women, valuable wives, dynamic women, virtuous women. And with that, can you please stand up so we can pray. But before we pray for our mothers and women, with all eyes closed, please, all eyes closed, we know that the secret of life for the virtuous woman, the valuable woman, to become a godly woman is that she seeks the Lord and walks with the Lord. So if you haven't personally committed your life to Jesus Christ, I'm inviting you to do so now so I can lead you to Christ. With all eyes closed, it's just you and Jesus. Nobody's looking. Only Jesus nudging you. Remember the way maker touching every heart. If the Holy Spirit is touching your heart now to say, I'm here. I've never personally declared you as my Lord and Savior. Please raise your hand. I want to pray with you. Jesus is with you. Thank you, God. All right, let's play. We're going to pray now for all women. Oh, our God and our Lord, how precious are your words. And we just want to thank you for today, this special day in which we celebrate, honor, and appreciate mothers, women. 
Thank you for your reckless love that chases us all the time. Tear down any lies that we may have bought into so we can see and embrace your truth for our lives. Father, as you promised in James chapter 1 verse 21, we humbly receive this implanted word of life and encouragement about all women that we have learned in your holy scripture today. Because, Father God, if we look closely at our lives, we will see your fingerprints all over. So, Lord, help us to remember them for our blessings and your glory. And it is in this spirit, Lord, we lift up all women, mothers in our church, in our community, and as a matter of fact, everywhere before you today. So we pray for new mothers, Lord, come into terms with new responsibility for expectant mothers wandering and waiting for mothers who are tired stressed or depressed for mothers who struggle to balance the responsibility of work and family because they want their family to be taken care of they want them to be well they want them to fare well for mothers whose children have physical, mental, or emotional disabilities, Lord. And for mothers who raise children on their home. For mothers who have lost a child. For adoptive moms and foster moms, Lord. For mothers who have left, who, whose their children have left home, Lord. And for those who desire to be a mother, that's not been fulfilled yet. So Father God, just continue to strengthen and bless all mothers and for that matter, all women, so that their love may be deep and tender. And that they may lead the children that you have divinely put in their lives to know and love you. Father God, help each one of them, Lord, to become what you have ordained from creation. Godly women, virtuous women, valuable wives, dynamic women, deserving of praise, appreciation and recognition. For we ask all of this in Jesus' mighty name. And the church said, Amen. Amen.